Conservatives will do everything we can to the emergency workers, police, paramedics, fire services, power workers, military personnel, and all those who have gotten out as volunteers to help clean up the mess, pick up the debris, remove the downed trees, restore power lines, and take the initial steps towards normalcy, I thank you on behalf of all Canadians. I'd specifically like to acknowledge the devastation that Fiona has brought to Porto Basque, Newfoundland. Stories and images of fishing boats, infrastructure demolished, homes and apartments being engulfed by, wa by waves and swept out to sea. These images are gut-wrenching for every single Canadian. As one local resident put it, this is hands down the most terrifying thing I've seen in my life. And we're still in Porto Basque, as many, as many across the country have now heard. One of two lives was lost to the storm. So far, it was a 73-year-old 73 73-year-old uh, woman trying to leave her home as it was swept to sea by the waves. Loss of life leaves families, loved ones, and an entire community feeling helpless. PEI potato farmers who are already suffering under the government's self-imposed export ban and missed an entire season as a result of decisions by this government to shut down their industry. And many uh, still unable to sell their seeding potatoes, which are still subject to that same ban, now face the prospect of losing an entire year's crop. Dairy farmers are without electricity, risking the, th the threat of losing valuable livestock. And, of course, fishers have lost boats, wharves, and other critical infrastructure. Too many down east are going through extraordinary, extraordinary challenging times, and there's no two ways about it. That means we need to stand with the people on the ground. Slow, bureaucratic programs with big headlines and no delivery simply will not do. The government will need to act quickly to restore order, to bring back the communities that have been devastated and to get the businesses, farms and fishing communities back on their feet. We here in uh, the Conservative caucus will, speaking of feet, hold the government's feet to the fire to make sure that happens. The devastation of Fiona is not just the hurricane wreaking hab uh, havoc on our eastern family. Memories of Juan, Dorian and many other storms have brought hardship and devastation. In the presence of destruction and loss, however, Atlantic Canadians have proven their iron resolve to rise again and rebuild their lives. And they will rebuild again. We stand ready to work and help them along the way. We will do what is necessary to build upon their resilience, to provide them with the infrastructure and the funding that is necessary. On this journey, though, we, we would be remiss if we did not thank our American allies who have stepped up to fulfill their side of the agreement. Uh, we know of uh, worker, power workers from Maine coming across the border. It, remind, it reminds us uh, of the back in 1917, the Halifax explosion, which killed thousands of Haligonians. A train departed from Boston, loaded with medical supplies, surgeons, and other medical professionals. This assistance has always been bilateral. Of course, Canadians came to the rescue of Americans uh, fighting to retaliate against the terrorist attacks of 9-11. We as uh, North American neighbors have always been uh, so dedicated to the continuation of this friendship and so I would like to take a moment to thank the Americans who have come across the border. In particular, the Central Maine, Central Maine Power sent 16 line crews to help. We thank them for their work and we promise to re reciprocate. If God forbid, ever a need should be so required. And, yes, indeed. And I know that my c colleague from Cumberland Colchester, with whom I'm splitting my time, will build on that solidarity. Um, reports are surfacing, however, of government getting in the way again. Uh, we heard uh, that American crews working to get up into Canada and help uh, with the rescue uh, were held up because of the uh, infamous Arrive Can app, which unfortunately is with us, but mercifully, mercifully only until Saturday. We call on the government to el eliminate this app today so that it does not cause any more disruption. 
We do know that the, the public safety minister has denied these reports, but then his cabinet colleague, the emergency preparedness minister, contradicted him and said, indeed, there was an incident and a delay at the border, although he described it as inconsequential. I would remind him that minutes are consequential in an emergency. There is no time for gatekeepers, glitchy apps, or boondoggles when Canadians are in desperate need. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my Atlantic caucus that have kept me apprised. We were meeting on Saturday to discuss uh, our response. Uh, they uh, have been in contact with their local representatives, with their populations, with their fishing villages to find, uh, find the needs and bring them to our attention. I'd like to thank uh, the premiers, the local officials and the residents firsthand, as many of whom I've had a chance to speak with over the last several days. I'd like to thank the member for South Shore St. Margaret's, who reached out to local organizations, including the Maritimes Fishermen's Union and the PEI Fishermen Association and the Fish, Food and Allied Workers of Newfoundland. On behalf of the official opposition, we will continue to pray for everyone's safety. As the East Coast rebuilds following the damage and devastation of Hurricane Fiona, we as Canadians must continue to work together. In the words of the legendary Stompin' Tom Connors, <laughs> Soon the birds will once again be singing on every tree, and all nature will seem inclined to rest. Merci beaucoup. Questions and comments. Questions et commentaires. The Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Government.